director of our public data, and Hong is our open data administrator. Now, the truck safety app is part of the Trucks Eye View program. So we were lucky enough to have both Demel Gallard and Catherine Ponty from Freight Mobility here to talk to us a bit about that program. And of course, uh, the star of the show is our intern, Tafamo Latif, a computer science major from Hunter College. And he will be giving you a demonstration of the application that he's developed. Um, with that, I'm gonna turn it back over to Hong for a bit of our, um, a bit about our open data. Hi everyone, good afternoon. Thank you for joining uh, this session on Trucks Eye View program of, with DOT and Open Data Week. And I, my name is Hong, I'm the open data, I'm part of the open data team with DOT. And what I do is usually we process the data that's for the agency. We have over 200 different data sets and uh, we're always looking for more. And some of our data sets that are most popular are you know, bike routes and we have parking meters. We have various truck routes uh, throughout the city. And so this happens to be the, the data set that we're focusing on. And looking if you have any questions about open data process or, um, or the types of data sets DOT offers, feel free to ask in the chat. And I'm going to pass it on to Catherine, who it's is part first, of the- me first. It's me before Catherine. Okay, I'll pass it back okay. to Madalena. <laughs> That's okay, uh, not a problem. Okay, sorry about that. It's just um, Catherine's doing a lot of speaking and I just wanted to preface that with a little bit about the internship about how this came about. So I have an enormous amount of data that my team helps to process and code for automation. And to do that, we need a lot of work, a lot of extra help. So I had this idea, why not reach out to Hunter College and see if any of their students would like to help us in exchange for an internship. I could teach them about project management and they can do some small scale app development as well as help me with all of that data crunching. And so Hunter College said yes, and students signed up. One of those students was Tofamal. And before we really got started with the small scale app development, I reached out to my colleagues in DOT and said, do you guys have any ideas for some small projects that my interns can work on for this? And that's when the freight mobility team said, how about developing a game for us for Truckside View? And that's where all of this came about. So that's my part in all of this. And I started coordinating the rest, but let's move it on to the second most important person um, in this presentation. And that's Catherine Ponty, who's gonna to talk to you a bit about Trucks Eye View. Catherine? Thanks, Madalena, that's very sweet. Um, so next slide. Um, so welcome everyone. I'm Catherine, I'm a freight planner with our freight mobility unit uh, here at DOT. And Trucks Eye View is part of um, the portfolio of safety projects that my colleague Demel Gaylord and I work on. And it's really, a, it's an engaging program um, where we teach people the, of the general public about obstructive vision areas, commonly known as blind spots um, of these larger vehicles and the risks that they pose. And how we do this is we invite people to sit in the cab of a truck, actually get to experience what the truck driver can see and can't see, and then have an opportunity to actually talk to the driver of that truck and learn about the various mirrors and safety features of the truck. And, you know, it's a great program. Uh, it's really popular with families, uh, but it does have some limitations in the sense that, you know, it, um, you know, you have to be physically able to get into the, the cab of the truck. And also we're missing um, a really um, crucial demographic, which is young adults um, and college aged people. So next slide. So just to kind of give a, a bit more of a flavor of like how the current program works, uh, we have, you know, different deployments throughout the city, um, often during the summer months, and it's a combination of the, the truck and tabling and sort of visuals around the truck. But again, you know, to kind of get at some of the the 
pieces that are missing, you know, we wanted to think creatively about how can we expand this program and how can we get at some of those audiences that we're not capturing with these in-person events. And so that's what led us to come up, up with the idea of having uh, college-age interns actually work on um, di like strategies for digitizing the educational message of Trekside View so that they could engage with the safety topics themselves and think about how they could promote it to their peers. Um, so we we're really excited to have the opportunity to work with Madalena um, and the interns that she's been able to, to mentor um, on playing with and exploring what's possible in terms of digitizing Truckside View. Next slide. Uh, and just to throw it back into open data, you know, we we also, in addition to the truck routes, which um, Hong mentioned earlier, we also are looking at safety data provided by NYPD and like our Vision Zero teams to really look at um, where to prioritize, how prioritize where we place um, our current truck side view programming. So all of this work, even when it seems kind of fun, like these family oriented events, it's also very data driven and the with the intention of of really trying to target these safety messages to where they'll be most helpful. So with that, I'd love to pass it on to the star of the show, Tafumo. <laughs> Hi, Kathleen. Thank you for passing it off. Um, thank you, everyone, for joining. My name is Tafumo. Uh, so the currently the uh, freight mobility team uh, invites public to enter trucks and speak with truck drivers about truck blind spot safety for trucks IV program at public events. However, the uh, the way that it's done, it's done in a manual fashion, not in a digitized fashion. So the goal was to create a game to instruct public about trucks uh, truck safety in an accessible and interactive manner. And now I will be demonstrating what the app I have been working on. I'm not able to share my screen. Oh, the awkward pause while we wait. All right. Talk to you while we wait, tell us a bit about yourself. I am a computer science student at Hunter College. Um, programming has been always an interesting concept for me. I, I grasped onto programming when I was 11. And um, since then, I have been coding. And uh, so this project interested me because now I had the opportunity to potentially create a game that may be used to teach people about truck blind spot safety. So I took on this project. Um, in the future, what I would like to do is be able to work with the C++ uh, programming language and to build something for the future. Here we are. Um, so here we are with the uh, game. Uh, we are. We have two modes: truck driving mode and truck route driving. Let's check out the truck driving mode. Let's give it a bit of time to load. And once it's loaded, we can switch to first uh, person view. And let's drive a little bit. So here we, are, we can see some pedestrians on the on the scene, and um, if the pedestrians happen to block one of the sensors of the truck, we get a message stating that would you like to move the person away. So let's just see that in action. So here we are. Here. We, we had a message that was stating, would you like to move this person? It's blocking your, uh, uh, obstructing your sensors. Would you like to move that person? And the idea behind this is that in real life, when uh, a truck driver is driving, um, they can be alerted of the, uh, there can be truck sensors around the truck on the blind spots. And then the truck driver can be alerted, hey, there is a pedestrian or someone blocking your sensors of the blind spot. Tell them to move away and the truck driver would honk at the, at the, at the horn or they would, um, uh, or they would, um, they would uh, tell somehow the, the pedestrian to move away so that they don't get hit by the truck. 
So that's the truck driving mode. Uh, let's take a look at truck route driving. And the truck route driving, what we did is we used Mapbox to be able to um, to be able to to be able to see a world where there are streets and whatnot. And we imported um, data from open 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 data uh, regarding the truck routes. And so what we have done is placed markers on those truck routes based on the location with the help of Mapbox. And uh, it shows us what truck route we're in when we drive past those markers. So here in this case, we're, we happen to be in the truck route. So let's drive around a little bit. What we also notice is that there's messaging on the screen that, that tells the uh, user, uh, make sure not to drive off the truck route. So that this is for truck safety to let the users know that they, when they're driving a the truck, they shouldn't move out of the truck route. They should stay within the truck route. So here we can see that we are in Fordham Road, um, and we're, and it also shows the type of route we're in. Um, so we're seeing we're in Fordham Road. Um, uh, that's the truck route, and then we're in local route. That's what we see. Um, and one more thing is that we can also switch between first person and third person. So let's let's go drive forward a little bit. And we can also see that there's the red indicator indicating which, uh, right here, it's indicating to the user which sensor is being blocked. So in this case, the front sensor is being blocked and alerts the user that you have the front sensor being blocked. So that was it for the truck uh, truck route driving, and this is this was a demonstration of the uh, truck safety app so far. Yeah. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. So, if there's time, we have. I'm sure that there's a lot of questions. We've done um, a lot of work in a very short period of time. I know that Tafamo had to recreate this whole thing and he only had since January to do it. And that's around his whole school schedule. I do know that there, um, that we probably would be working on this, but that's more of a Catherine statement than for me. So I'm not going to go ahead and answer that yet. Um, but if there's any questions or comments, we'd be happy to um, field them now. And, and I also want to shout out a, a huge thank you to Tafamo because he is volunteering his time right now. Um, he, he started off as an intern and then he's continued as a volunteer. And I mean, it's just so important to like see, you know, have have folks creatively engage with with these uh, safety lessons and topics and explore learning um, with them. And so I really appreciate Tafamo's like use of, of our program data and and messaging to try to come up with something creative and learn about app development and programming at the same time. Tafamo, would you like to share um, maybe some of the like kind of more interesting things you learned throughout the process uh, with us? Yeah. Um, so one of the things that I discovered is how to import open street map data into Unity. Um, there are YouTube videos that show how to do it programmatically, but I found out that there's a way to do it using a software called Blender, and you can import, you can, uh, there's a add-on, and you can use that add-on to import OpenStreetMap data. OpenStreetMap, if you don't know, is a, is a, like a 3D spatial data website. They contain a lot of, all of the nodes uh, or, points of interest and then connected by uh, those points of interest are connected uh, via lines and they basically mapped out all of the um, the world's um, street data. Uh, there's also uh, other data as well, uh, spatial data. Um, so I did not know how to import that data into Unity very easily. And I learned that there's Blender and there's a, uh, 
there is a add-on in Blender that you could use to import OpenStreetMap data. Another thing that I had learned was I tried to um, there was a there was a need to implement um, um, uh, the uh, one of the things that I discovered is KD tree. KD tree is a way to uh, efficiently search through a bunch of points. And it's like a tree, and K dimensional tree is a way to search off. Um, um, data points efficiently and uh, it has a pretty fast um, it's a pretty fast there's a pretty fast algorithm to do so and so I discovered that as well so those are some of the things that I came across and I found interesting so I see one question in the chat that's asking what are your next steps with the city Devante can you um, elaborate a bit on that I'm not sure if Devante is able to speak. Um, I'm assuming that that means, oh, oh, you're asking what are Tofmol's next steps with the city? Um, Catherine? Well, um, I mean, we would love to, you know, certainly like continue to work with Tofmol. Um, we'll see, you know, if, if, you know, if, if there's, if Tafmal is able to continue on as an intern um, in some capacity, uh, we don't, we currently don't have a, a line for an intern, um, but we're hoping to get one. Um, but that's, you know, certainly um, Tafmal's work as a volunteer is, is very welcome. <laughs> we appreciate it. Uh, you know, and, and certainly we'd love to see uh, Tafmal continue to be involved with DOT and continue to grow. Um, uh, in his uh, programming skills. Uh, when you first wrote that question, I was actually thinking that they meant what are the next steps with this application or what are we thinking? I mean, uh, are there next steps? Um, in terms of, I think that this is a great like space for exploration um, in terms of this particular application. Uh, you know, Tafamil can, it's his, it's his project and we certainly encourage um, you know, more people to explore like ways to to digitize and and play with and communicate the safety message. Uh, we are on a separate track looking um, to looking at um, down the road, finding ways to um, add a digital component to Truckside View, but um, it's still very early. It's a very early phase. And certainly this, um, all of the, both Tafamil and other interns work on kind of flesh, like exploring ways that these apps could work, um, you know, like kind of working through uh, and prototyping different ideas has really helped us um, come up with some like uh, ideas for what we would like to um, incorporate into a future program. Uh, but, you know, that's, it's still a very early phase. So there's something else in the chat. M asks, is there any chance that this turns into a trucker support app, warning them if they are off route or if there's a low bridge or overpass on a parkway, et cetera? I mean, I think that, that that's sort of, those sorts of apps are, are definitely needed. Um, there are, you know, certainly within the private sector, there is a lot of work being done around this. And I think that's something that's exciting for college students um, like Tafamol is that, you know, engaging with these topics and thoughts, you know, it, it, you, yes, you know, we'd love to have you at DOT, but also there are a lot of private center, set, uh, private sector companies that are right now as we speak, like working through um, developing uh, new kinds of, um, ways to incorporate like low bridge uh, and clearance warnings and um, truck route, the truck route network into their um, commercial like GPS uh, maps. You know, it's something we would like to see more of. Um, we don't, you know, that's again, it's the private sector, so we don't have full control over what they do. Uh, but, you know, we are definitely very encouraging of, of seeing more apps um, like this available to our our freight driving community um, because it's it's very needed and it's a really great way to increase safety uh, and so you know top of all like like please like 
you know, use what you've learned here and you can always, you know, incorporate into your resume and look, you know, and look at different uh, data uh, and software companies that, that are engaging um, on these topics. Actually, I'm curious, um, Catherine, if you know if there's any new technology that will help truckers with the blind spots that people could be looking out for or know so that people are aware. Um, yeah, there's a, there's, yeah, there's a lot of really interesting stuff happening. Um, I, I'm actually, I probably, there's probably much more than even I'm aware of, at, you know, out there. Um, certainly, uh, you know, there's a lot of great stuff around mirrors and sensors with like newer trucks. One of the challenges is that, um, you know, it's more economic to, to have a long lived truck than the newest model like so a lot of the trucks on our streets are still older models so they don't have you know so they don't have all the bells and whistles that we would love to see in terms of safety features but like some of the newer trucks um out there have some amazing sensors um backup cams uh you know really great um mirrors and and like uh, various uh, other kinds of like even sim simple technologies like side guards, which um, the city has mandated, uh, you know, is is actually very important and life saving. And so um, there's so yeah, I mean, I think that that the sector is always evolving, and we certainly encourage. Um, for safer truck design or even just uh, retrofits that are affordable enough for for drivers to be able to to you know make sure their their trucks are 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 as safe as they can be because it, it can be really hard for smaller companies one thing that i was hoping we could do since we have the extra time tafamal if i take this uh screen down and you share your screen again could we maybe go through a couple of examples of, hey, this is how we move the pedestrian. Here's how we move the bike. Here's how we can see from the uh, truck's eye view. This is exactly what the trucker sees. So a pedestrian needs to make certain that they are aware not to uh, do something foolish when they're outside of the trucker's view. Or maybe a couple of examples of how do we deal with this low bridge and how do we stay on the truck route? So. One thing I think might be really helpful for future tweaks that we might do um, if we get to those tweaks would be to get some feedback from anybody that saw it to see what it is that they would like. Now, remember, this is very much in draft mode. I know others have done this, but if there are suggestions, we would love to be able to gather them now with um, this crowd that's here. So Tafamo, if I stop sharing, can you just reshare what you have and go through some examples? Tell them I can't hear you. Yeah, you may be on mute. Okay. There you are. So here we are. Um, and um, yeah, so in this is an example where if we have a, where we're trying to show an example of a pedestrian. So let's drive a little bit. Here, uh, there was a person on the on the right side of the uh, of the truck, and the and the, the game gives a um, warning to the user: "Hey, there is a person blocking your your sensor. Would you like to move the object?" And if I press no, it will come back again because the person hasn't moved yet from the sensor. So if we press yes, 
then the message alert comes out because the person has now moved. Now, this is something that we can, in, in real life, there can be a um, trucks with sensors around all around their blind spots, and maybe with with uh, artificial intelligence, there can be cameras with sensors that can detect if it's a person or a or a bicycle on the road. And that can alert the user, uh, the, the driver saying, hey, there's a person or a bicycle that's blocking your, your blind spot sensors. Would you like to, would you like do something to make that person move away? So they might honk or they might um, get out of the truck and tell the pedestrian or the bicyclist to move away. Um, so that's one case where this sensor thing can be useful um, and right here what we what we don't have if I go back to the truck route driving um, so far the we have been able to load the truck route data so we know what um, uh, what route we're in um, however there is no uh, mechanism to tell if we are underpass or overpass um, and the also one of the things that is important here is if we drive a little bit Here, um, what we can see here is that um, there are uh, roads that are overpass, and then there's an underpass here. There is, at the moment, there is no way of differentiating between the two. So now, what it looks like is that it's like one road, and then there's a road right over it. But this is an overpass, and there's an underpass. So, in the future there might be mapping technologies where we would be able to see in 3D view that this is this is the overpass and this is the underpass and we're going through it and the overpass is a little higher. Um, one of the other things that can happen is um, that there is a uh, clearance that's, that's allowed. So let's say 14 feet clearance or whatnot. Um, right now, there is no capability to be able to tell, okay, is this underpass fit for this truck with this height? Um, so one, that's uh, some of the other. That's another thing that can be implemented in the future. Um, so yeah, the, the, those are. Is there any other thing you would like to share, Madalena? Um, I think something that everyone might like to see um, is. Like, I'm trying to think of an example. <clears throat> um, okay, so I'm trying to think of an example, and one escapes me right now. I'm trying to think of a very low bridge. Um, I mean, can you possibly drive on the Grand Central Parkway? and find something along those lines. I mean, you could drive along any parkway, I guess, to find one of those, but I just wanted to find an area. It could be any area in the Bronx where low bridge clearance is an issue. And I think that uh, Catherine might know better than I would. Uh, another thing that I would um, hope, I'm gonna hopefully try to do is put a few links in the chat for everyone while you're doing the demo. So, Catherine, do you have a spot in particular that you'd like uh, Taco Mole to demonstrate? 
right now we don't have that capability to to land on any any to, specific uh, yeah now there so there are there are um in the in the truck route data which is connected to lion um there there are some like low clearance areas flagged um but yeah i i think i think that that could be um like Tafamo, if you wanted to continue, um, you know, developing out this app and and sort of building on it, that could be a direction to go. Is to explore, you know, how to um, incorporate that information around the low clearances and um, and I think kind of refining the messaging um, around because it, it's the the truck routes it's important for trucks to stay on the truck routes but like they obviously have to leave them to make deliveries so it's not like they only can be on truck routes uh but it's more that we don't want them taking shortcuts where they're going on to non-truck route roads um when they don't have to be for for their final destination purposes um but yeah i think i think there's there's definitely areas for refinement but it's it's a it's a great like draft, you know, and it's, you've put in a lot of work on it, which is uh, pretty evident. Um, I, I also wanted to like go back to earlier when we were talking about blind uh, blind spots or obstructive vision areas. Uh, USDOT, the Volpe Center, um, has been doing some interesting work uh, trying to actually um, measure and create a database of like the actual um, kind of physical dimensions of the um, abstract vision areas for different kinds of trucks and vehicles and and that's sort of an exciting uh kind of piece uh that's that's sort of out there and emerging um as we speak in terms of gathering this data and then helping to inform both potentially better vehicle design as well as maybe like future like sensors and other um and other tools that vehicles can be incorporated with to improve their safety Would you be able to drive to a road that's not a truck route? What would happen in the app? In this case, it will nothing will happen. So if I go back a word a little bit. So what we can see is if we're starting to drive off truck, uh, off, off the truck route, um, it tells the user, make sure to not drive off the truck route. That's kind of the messaging that's there. So let the user know you should be on a truck route. So now we're back on a truck route and it displays the truck route, what truck route we're in and what type of route it is. So this is a local, tr local route and this is we're in Fordham Road. Okay. Um, something like to, that could be added, uh, and I don't know, um, Tafamul, if you if you incorporated this yet um, in this iteration, but there are um, roads where trucks are actually forbidden to be on because of um, like they're just like the laws and also um, the low clearances, and these are the um, the parkway system. So, for example, Bronx River Parkway, which is nearby Fordham Road, is is a road where we wouldn't, you know, where where we don't want to see trucks, right? And so that might be that could get an even flashier like 
don't go on this road, you know. <laughs> Maybe in red. Yeah. <laughs> um, because that's that's also a really and what I love about this is it's like it's it's kind of it's a fun thing, but it's also talking about like, well, why do we have these truck routes? And there are roads where we really don't want trucks to be on and um you know, and it's like it's just like a it is pretty cool to kind of get that information out there. Sorry, can you uh, can you explain what the V the V is? Is that the sensor? So this is to switch toggle between uh, first person and third person. Okay. It's a button to toggle between first person and third person. Okay. Yeah. Well, and Tuffamal, I saw in the chat, um, there's uh, you got a nice comment. Um, great job. Do Thank you, you. Do you plan to continue your development of this application? Um, also, have you seen other open data during your internship that inspired you to create something else? Um, and, you know, and, and then they talk about how they have an interest in computer science and appreciate the visualization of the data in this um, more accessible, in this way that's more accessible to the public. So, yeah, I don't know if you want to speak to that. I don't know if, I don't have any plans yet to, to continue work on this app. I, I do thank you for, for congratulating me and whatnot. Um, but um, one of the things is that, it, yeah, no, I, I wasn't inspired by any other um, open data uh, data sets. Um, uh, although it's, it's certainly interesting to, to look at those data sets and, um, and be able to fetch out some information to be able to visualize it and do something nice with it like we have in this app. So yeah, uh, I'll also share that you know the kind of the gamified learning is something that um, Demel and I have been very interested in. Um, it's like both in terms of um, just like because it is a great way to to sort of bring people into a subject matter that can be kind of depressing <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> uh, you know, we're talking about truck crashes and all that, um, but but also you know in, in a way that that kind of brings this uh, information and this data to life so that's that's something that we we are very interested in in seeing more of brian you have a question yeah yeah sorry thank you um and, and I, I, think it's great. Um, I i know that like we're, truck drivers... we're having trouble hearing you can you speak up a little bit Buffalo, can you mute Optimal. Thank you. Can you all hear me better now? Great. Thank you. Yes. Um, so I know that like local truck drivers making local deliveries are allowed to drive off routes, but they have to use the shortest path to their destination. And then when they, they have to use then the shortest path to return to the route. Um, but I've always wondered like, how would anybody know that? How would anybody you know, be able to prove that. I thought about like maybe helping truck drivers find the, you know, the the shortest route um, from a truck route to their final destination. So, I mean, we have our truck route map and that information is free to the public. Uh, and so they can use that for routing. Um, you know, we, there has been some talk about working, um, collaborating with a uh, uh, on some on potentially like a an app a routing app but that's um certainly we're not the, the private sector is much further along on that um and there are uh, we do encourage we strongly encourage commercial um uh gps uh routing uh systems that that are for designed for commercial drivers that have that kind of information on them um uh, the problem is you know when you, you think about the universe of people making deliveries you have a lot of small time mom and pop operations it's like maybe someone renting a truck maybe somebody um who drives like you know they own their truck and it's just them and they go out um and so you know they and maybe they're used to working in a different part of the country and they and so it's like often there are these kind of gaps where they're using like a cell phone for for like a, a car to route themselves 
through the city. And that's, and so we've been trying to do outreach to support um, getting, trying to get to the members of the trucking community that need to, to understand the, the laws and also the resources that we have available um, in terms of uh, both the, the truck route map and also that the, there are commercial um, routing uh, systems out there that have our data that incorporate it into um into uh into the the routes that they they you know that the routing information that they provide for the drivers and you know when for example like you know all drivers usually have um they'll have like a a a, a, tr a sheet a log of like where they're going um so like if a like say someone gets pulled over they can show like why the rationale for why they took the route that they did to get from point a to point b so it's there are ways to get at that that like that that problem that you mentioned and so you know and, and really what we've been trying to do is to encourage people to be aware of the free resources that we do have available, such as the truck route map, um, and and also various like safety tips and guides. And we also have um, a bridge strike uh, task force working group. We work closely with NYPD to like try to educate drivers around um, you know the risk of bridge strikes, like you know, to really take the clearance information seriously that's posted on the bridges. A lot of times people will kind of, you know, they might think, oh, well, I think I can fit and they really can't. And and a lot of times they're actually, again, using um, like a like a personal vehicle GPS system to to go onto a parkway where they really aren't supposed to be at all, and um, and then getting into trouble that way. And so that's been so we've been Demel and I have really been doing a lot of educational pushes to the community um, around these things. But certainly, like technology solutions are exciting. Um, again, I think I mentioned this before. Like part of the problem is like the the universe that we're dealing with, right? Like the the large fleets that are, have the high tech trucks are gonna have more resources, even safety training resources, and so it's um, so they'll be in a better position potentially to be able to avoid these these problems. Ideally, you know, like if they're getting all those resources to the the drivers, but then you you know you look at um, smaller fleets or companies that may be working with a lot of contractors. So they're not, they don't have their own fleet, they're contracting out. Um, then you might have folks that don't have as many resources to have a, a safety trainer on staff to, to um, make sure that their drivers have um, all the latest safety uh, information or don't have the money to, to either retrofit or buy a new vehicle that has all the latest um, safety technologies um, incorporated into it. Um, and so so we've really been, you know, while we want to kind of continue to push for those technologies to be developed um, and, and to kind of have better and better uh, and safer trucks and truck systems and driving um, practices out there, um, we also are trying to do education and outreach to make sure that folks who maybe aren't um, don't have the the access to that yet are at least um, aware of the rules and able to practice um, safe practices to the best of their ability. It's a long answer, but I hope that touches on some of the things that are coming up in the chat. So I'm not sure if I see anything. Oh, um, hang on. We have one more question. Hello, our trucks are always getting stuck under 234th Street train, is there any way to alert about the 13 feet requirement and maybe let NYPD know that the trucks on, on route and to assist trucks to, uh, to go to other direction uh, and app for truckers to take a, a rest break? Uh, it was something that was heard about on the news. Now, I don't know if I can answer this one, but from what, I, what I've seen is that there are a lot of truck apps out there there are a lot of 3D modeling apps. There are Unity apps. There are even templates. Um, this is new to us, but not a new concept. We're just f targeted on, you know, truck safety, uh, which is why virtual reality would be absolutely awesome because you could actually see from the um, that perspective. Um, so, 
I don't know if anything like that exists. Something like that would be absolutely awesome. I'm sure there are people working on exactly that. Um, there are. And I, okay. and <laughs> there definitely is, I are. Actually, I think this is our last question because I see we have two minutes left. Okay. Yeah. But like just. Yeah, there's definitely um, work being done on that. We're um, like, I, Demel, actually, this is sort of um, really Demel's area of expertise. Uh, and unfortunately, he's um, not able to join us. But, you know, just rest assured, you know, we we are monitoring um, those technological developments. We're monitoring what's out there um, in, you know, the private sector. And we're also looking for opportunities where we can um, to, you know, see if we can incorporate like or champion some of those innovations, uh, you know, in, in, in this the public sector. So so it's yeah, definitely in the works. We're <laughs> Okay. Well, thank you everyone for joining today's event. Um, a special thank you to Catherine, Madalena, Hong, and Tafamal for speaking with us today and sharing what they're working on. Um, <clears throat> just a reminder that um, I'm going to put a link to the program in the chat, um, that there are other events going on this week. Um, I'm actually joining a couple of them later myself um, about interfacing with New York City's open data through Python. Um, there's one later this week that I'm joining that's a bit about uh, the checkbooks of NYC, kind of how the city spends its money. I'm excited about learning about that, but please feel free to check out the open-data.nyc site um, to learn more. And I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day.